Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. The day before Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to the Thanksgiving break and a little bit of time off here. If um, you guys are traveling or um, heading out for your Thanksgiving holidays, I want to wish you all a fantastic holiday. I want to wish you all of the best. Be safe and we'll see you back here next week. But how about we grab ourselves something to drink, let's settle in, and let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. You know, it's going to be an interesting day today, which, is, you know, typically we see a declining volume today and day ahead of a holiday like this. Everybody's heading out. It's the getaway day. Everybody's headed to the airports and jumping in their cars, headed to grandma's house and that kind of thing for the holiday. But doggone it, this week we have just a massive amount of data coming our way that could change everything. So how about we take a look at these charts first and see if we can gain some information from that. And then we'll dive into some of the other details. Let's take a look here. As you can see in the Dow, we have given up that trend. And I've mentioned this before. We gave up that upside trend and we are officially in a downtrend. And although yesterday we had that nice bull bullish move we did hold right here at this price support we did have that nice bullish move yesterday um, that was a nice relief but honestly it really didn't change anything as a matter of fact if you scroll through the entire list of the Dow Industrials you're gonna find probably very few charts that you'd actually be interested in buying there is one as a matter of fact that looks really good and that could be McDonald's but other than that it's a pretty bleak list of charts um, either we have a couple that are really extended or a large group that are trying to just bounce off of bottoms into downtrends and resistance areas so we had this impression yesterday that everything was great but let's take a look at this chart in a little bit different way if we take a look and, and it is a good news sign that we held that price support in the chart but if we look at our downtrend in this chart and then take a look right in here at this price resistance that runs right across here and we have kind of the double whammy of resistance here in that chart so what we need to see is we need to see some bullishness enough bullishness to break us through now remember the way i trade um and you you certainly don't <laughs> don't have to um like this method at all it's my method but um we have seen many many times particularly in indexes where we can break above a resistance area and then completely reverse it to the downside. So when I see that downtrend break, I need to see proof that we're gonna hold a higher low so that we can resume that uptrend. So although we may break through there, I'm not sure I'm ready to trust it just yet, and particularly heading into a holiday weekend. So be really, really careful here um, with that movement in the Dow. Notice the pre-market is a little bit lower. We have some concerns, and we'll talk about those concerns here in just a little bit. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now, SPY had a nice little hammer pattern yesterday, but that really doesn't change anything. Remember, just like a um, kind of a, a bearish candle here at the top requires some follow through to the downside to be valid, um, so does a hammer pattern or what might be called a hanging man pattern at a top. And we need some follow through to the upside. So it certainly was nice to see that recovery yesterday, but keep in mind we still have quite a bit of resistance. This rejection um, candle here is still in play. And we have this little bit of bearishness um, looking at us this morning, a little bit of uncertainty here in the market. Now, the good news is that we held on to this price support. Notice we come down there and came real close, tested that, 
before we bounced yesterday. But I don't think we can really, um, you know, shout the all clear on this. And remember, we're going to have to push through that resistance up there and actually hold it to prove um, that those bulls are in control. If those bears were happened happen to gain some energy today with all the data coming our way, then watch this area right here because if we fail this area, then we have that potential for a really steep decline in the S&P 500 to seek out that next level of price resistance in the chart. There really isn't much in here to hold us and um, through that area. So watch that closely. And we're so extended away from our 50 day moving average, you can see we could easily um, fall past this level just to come back and test that 50 day. So watch that carefully. Um, let's take a look at the Qs. Now the QQQ also had a nice little recovery day yesterday, but we've got a problem with the NASDAQ and that is, the rising bonds, our bonds continue to, to move up and that affects big tech more than about anyone else or tech more than any other company out there. And so let's take a look at what we've got going. We still have this price resistance level in the chart and we didn't quite break through that yesterday. We gave it, we gave it an attempt, but didn't quite break through. So what that means is we're kind of stuck between these two levels at the moment with a lot of uncertain data coming our way. Anything is possible here, but please keep in mind that we'll need to break through up here and prove to hold. And then we still have this rejection candle up here um, in our way to think about. Um, so if those bulls find that inspiration, and they certainly could, watch carefully for that break up here there and be very cautious because we could pop up into here and still fail. And if we do find some reason for those bears to get engaged here in the data this morning, then please keep in mind if we were to break the low of yesterday's candle and then push on down into here, we might find some support in the chart there. But if we don't, there is a long fall, um, a hard fall back down here to um, the bigger level of price support in the chart. And once again, we are so far stretched away from our 50 day moving average. Um, it certainly is a possibility of a tremendous pullback if those bears find the reason for it. So let's take a look at our Russell. Now IWM um, has a bit of a problem here in the fact that we had a year's worth of price support, nearly a year's worth of price support in that chart that we had pushed through. But unfortunately, we did not hold it. And yesterday we even broke down through the trend before we bounced up. So as you can see in this chart, we have a little bit of a problem. We have resistance of our trend. We have resistance of this big area this year's worth of price resistance and then we have the downtrend here that has to be dealt with in that chart so even if we do catch a rally back here in iwm we want to watch these areas in here for that potential failure back down and remember we have to break through that level and prove that we can hold it before we can really shout the all clear that we have um, resumed an uptrend here in the Russell. Certainly possible, but certainly possible the other direction as well. Then if we take a look at our VIX, our VIX rallied pretty strongly early in the day yesterday, but finally pulled back on the day um, because we surged there at the end of the trading day, pushing back up. But I want you to notice that even though we had a black candle here, we actually closed at a higher high in um, the VIX. So we still maintain this upside trend here in the chart. And if you guys remember, I talked about this 20, whoops, this 20 handle in the chart and um, if we were to push up through, this is a big level in this chart. 
If we were to find that bearish reason and push up through there, that could be a problem. But so far, we're holding that area as resistance. So that's a good sign that we could potentially pull back into here, see that little bit of bullishness come in the market if the data is good. And then we could um, maybe start to the upside again, or we break this down finally and really stretch out for more highs in the market. Now let's take a look at our T2122. Now the T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And I thought this was interesting yesterday while the diamonds was pushing up. I want you to notice that we didn't improve really on T2122 yesterday. What happened actually is we had more stocks declining yesterday than we had going up. So if you take a look at this, we still have that opportunity. If those bears have that, uh, find something in the data today to engage, then we have this downside opportunity that is set up here in the market. So watch carefully for that. But if those bulls find some good, um, good things in the data, we certainly have given ourselves plenty of upside potential move here to surge to the upside. So watch carefully. We could easily catch that upside move um, if we get that inspiration in the data. Then let's take a look at our T2108. T2108 is kind of an interesting um, indicator in that they chose to use the 40-day moving average versus the 50-day moving average. But one of the things I want you to notice here is while we were rallying yesterday and we got the impression that the market was really improving a lot, I want you to notice here that we didn't improve here. We still have 50% of our stocks that are below the 50 day moving or 40 day moving average. So that's not really improvement. As a matter of fact, you can see we've broken the trend. We've broken some um, um, support levels in this chart, which gives me still concern that we've got an awful lot of weight pushing to the downside. And if we flip over to T2107, which is the percentage of stocks below, I mean above its 200 day moving average, we did have a little tiny improvement there. So we did push up a little bit. So we had those companies bouncing off of those lows yesterday. That gave us that little bit of lift and gave us that impression that things were improving. But let's keep in mind, we still have a downtrend and resistance in this chart that we need to breach. So we've got a lot of work. If we find some bearish reasons today, this becomes a very heavy anchor for um, the few stocks that have been moving up to lift it. So watch carefully if we happen to find some reason for bearishness. Let's take a look at our uh, T2101, which is the absolute market breadth in the market. And notice that the breadth actually increased a little bit yesterday and it usually cr increases or goes up on selling. So we had enough selling yesterday that we increased to the upside in that market breadth. We'll want to watch that per pretty closely. If we were to find some bearish reason in here and break this long downtrend that happened to hold up here at a higher low, that could be really problematic for the market. But at the same time, if we find bullishness, then we could continue to wander around and wind up in this big, massive wedge that's been created in the breadth chart. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. And I got to tell you guys, we got a whopper of an economic calendar um, to deal with today. Let's take a look at this. First thing this morning, um, coming into the open, before the market opens, we're going to have durable goods orders. We're going to have GDP, um, international trading goods, and jobless claims all at once at 8.30 a.m., which means we could see an awful lot of volatility prior to the market open, a little bit of wildness in that. Will it be bullish? Will it be bearish? Will it be hmm, ho-hum? I don't know, but watch carefully for that because some inflationary data, some uh, uh, we're actually looking for a negative number in durable goods as an improvement. So keep a close eye on that. And then we hit the next wave of data here 
Um, at about 10 o'clock, notice we're going to have new home sales, personal incomes, and consumer sentiment. Sentiment has been extremely low, so we want to watch carefully on that. That could be an interesting one today, even though it's not really meant as a, typically not a big market mover, but if sentiment continues to decline, that could be a problem. And then we're going to have petroleum status. We all know that that could be important with the way oil prices are reacting in this market we've got natural gas and then believe it or not later this afternoon we're going to hear from the FOMC minutes so we have plenty of reason in here for investors to have some pre-holiday indigestion trying to digest all of this um, data coming our way. What I wrote in the morning blog today is anything is possible and I truly truly believe anything is possible today. If that data comes in supporting the bulls we certainly could have a nice rally. We could also see volumes drop really quickly if all of a sudden the fear drops out of the market. We could see volumes drop quickly as everybody heads out for their travel plans. If that fear comes in if we get some bearish reason we could see a little bit more pressure to the downside and that could cause quite a bit of uncertainty headed into the holiday weekend. We also want to consider guys that there is a major problem going on. The Turkish Lira is collapsing, collapsing in a really big way. We had New Zealand increase. There's some currency fluctuations going on here this morning. We had New Zealand raise its interest rates last night and we have our U.S. bonds. Um, if we take a look at um, our 10-year treasuries, our 10-year treasuries are rallying. Now we're looking for a little teeny tiny pullback in this this morning, but as these bonds continue to get higher and higher and higher, this is anticipation of higher rates in the market. And that is a concern for tech particularly. And it's one of the reasons why we've seen a little bit of softness or weakness in tech here recently with um, those bonds moving up. And that's our 10 year. If we look at our 30 year, um, our 30 year also ran up yesterday. So we had a little bit of a dip yesterday morning on uh, on the bonds heading into data, but then it just picked up and grew all day long. And if we take a look at um, US dollar, our US dollar continues to surge and that's creating some issues in currencies around the world. And it's not because our dollar is really strong. It's because we have some weakening conditions around the world that we need to be thinking of. Now you add to this the potential that Germany may come out today and announce pandemic lockdowns again uh, because their um, COVID numbers are surging to new records. And boy, we have a mix of uncertainty in here that could mean just about anything for our market. So guys, be really, really careful. And then I want to let everyone know that uh, right way options, hit and run candlesticks, we will be closed uh, Thursday. Obviously, there's no market on Thursday, but I'm also going to be closed Friday. So there will be not me, not be a morning market prep video for Friday. And I want to caution everyone to be very, very careful if you do decide to trade on um, Friday. That is typically a very light volume, very choppy day, and you will typically be just trading with um, computer algorithms. So be really, really careful out there. Um, we certainly could surge, we certainly could sink, but be very, very careful in that trading or making lots of trading decisions on that Friday. And remember, it's just a partial day. Let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be setting. Oh, I forgot. Let's take a quick look at earnings. Earnings, we have about 20 companies um, on the list today, but we don't have a whole lot of it notable. So if you guys want to pick up those notables, click the link below the title of the video and go to the morning blog. But I'm going to just mention uh, John Deere. John Deere reporting today. That could help those industrials a little bit here. As you can see, it is surging up this morning. And that might also provide a little bit of lift for companies like Cummins, um, CMI, and um, 
and also caterpillar. So keep an eye on that cat. Watch those closely um, as that comes along. But let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor, um, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be worthy, to be helpful, if you could please do me a favor, um, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. You know, it does take a lot of effort to put these videos together every single day for the market. And I truly appreciate those who take the time to support that um, with their comments, thumbs up, um, by clicking that buy me a coffee link uh, below the title of the video. You guys are awesome and I truly appreciate it. And I get the opportunity today to announce that we finally made it over 25,000 subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone um, who did that. You guys are awesome. I truly, truly appreciate it. I never in my wildest dreams would have expected that there would be that many people out there interested in this kind of content that's not filled with hype and not filled with prediction. And um, thank you so much to everyone. I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, remember what I'm going to do now that we've reached 25,000, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. So um, I'll make some announcements on that next week. Um, I'll put together a special event. And um, what we'll be doing is we'll be doing a giveaway um, for reaching 25,000. So everyone, uh, uh, stay stay um, um, clued in on that and I will let you know in plenty of time to attend that for um, uh, some of those giveaways. Let's take a look at um, these stocks that could be setting up and remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security as a matter of fact I would say you need to be very very careful you need to be very cognizant that holiday trading is very risky and you should never ever blindly follow someone else's trade idea um, let's take a look at ford um, you guys know that i've mentioned ford a couple of times um, before even this week and ford had a pretty good day um, um, the other day popping up here and has just been resting pulling back here yesterday and may do the same today but notice that that's just sliding out here toward that trend so there is that possibility here if we can find some inspiration in the market the ford may perk up and move on through to the upside so watch carefully uh for that um i mentioned um uh, McDonald's. McDonald's is a, one of the better looking charts in the Dow right now. And if you take a look at that nice little upside move here going on um, in uh, Mickey D's pushing on through. So looking pretty darn good. I think you need to put on your list and be keeping an eye on some of these high flyers. They are pretty strong charts in these high flyers, but notice that Procter & Gamble has broken this major resistance area in the chart and is looking doggone bullish here. So as this pushes on high, higher, I would be careful about chasing into that right now, but any rest or pullback that proves that we can hold up here and follows in the trend, I think um, could set up a good opportunity for Proctor. Also gonna have to put Pfizer in that list. Notice that Pfizer breaking through that resistance up here, holding that nice little consolidation. One of the better charts that I saw yesterday that is actually setting up, not all stretched out already. So keep an eye on this, maybe put a price alert on here, take a look at that and see if that can pop through to the upside. You might wanna take a look at some of these defensive sector stocks like PepsiCo. PepsiCo holding up here, good divvy pair, market might be seeing a little bit of uncertainty we might be running into a lack of momentum here and so folks might shift to more conservative type trades take a look at pepsico that's looking pretty good here in that chart and we're seeing other places in the market in that trying to perk up just a little bit take a look at constellation brands now constellation brands went like a rocket shot and it needs a considerable rest in here pushing against that resistance but again i want to point out that consumer defensive sector where we have some of those stocks pushing to the upside take a look at gis general mills boy it doesn't they don't become more boring than general mills um, as a stock 
but notice that we've been holding up pretty bullishly here in this chart. Any um, consolidation that continues to hold that support could perk on through to the upside. And we have some good dividends that are paid on that chart. So take a look at some of those defensives. I gotta tell you guys, with bonds continuing to rally, unless we start seeing those bonds come back, I would be a little bit suspicious of stocks like AMD. Um, just yet now if they can hold if they can rest a little bit longer in here and if we can see those um, bonds starting to decline then this may set up some opportunity for the upside but keep a real close eye on uh, charts like that and I want to just one more time caution you about holiday trading be really really careful volume can drop out anything is possible over a long weekend that creates that uncertainty and that shakeup in the market so it might be wise to consider closing out some trades bringing in some cash going into the weekend without too many worries and um, um, just just relaxing just a little bit because um, anything is possible here. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And more importantly, I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Thanks, everyone, for all of your support. Going over 25,000 uh, subscribers, you guys rock. I truly appreciate it. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll see you right back here bright and early next Monday morning. Have a good one.